In the series of videos, we are performing a discrete integration of a half Gaussian. And in the last video, we tried doing a convergence study and we realized that this isn't enough, something's missing. So let's go ahead and run this and review why that is. What we're plotting here is the value of the integration as the number of points in that integration increases. And so of course, with very few points, this jumps around, goes crazy. But we do see this starting to settle in. If we were to check the values, it would probably be, you know, 0.8, 0.9 or, or so. Uh, I believe it was 0.8862 was our initial crude guess at the numerical integration. However, if the homework problem asked us to have accuracy out to some arbitrary number of digits, we really can't get that from this plot. And we could do something like maybe take this final value and look at the difference between everything else, but we don't really have any confidence that that final value is the exact value. Um, in this case, we could actually do an analytical integration and get the exact value, but in general, we don't have access to that. We don't know what the answer is. So instead, we're going to look at this a bit more like some of the previous algorithms we looked at, like uh, the root finding, where we set a tolerance and we looked at the change from iteration to iteration, and that let us control how many digits we're accurate out to. So let's go ahead and convert this over to that. Let's look at the change of the integration value from one iteration to the next. So we'll go up here. We have to add something else now. We'll call this uh, ddat for difference data. And again, we just want to initialize it to all zeros, the same length of whatever is in n dat here. Uh, let's see, what else in our loop has to change? So we still grab the next value of n. We still have to calculate the function. We will still perform the integration. But now we want to update this difference or calculate difference. So we want to calculate a number that is the current integration value minus the previous one. Now, of course, we can't do that if m equals 1 because there is no previous iteration. So we're only going to do this if m is greater than 1. If it is greater than 1, then let's put that number in ddat, in the nth value in ddat. And so it's going to be idat from the current iteration minus idat from the previous iteration. And the only other thing I'd want to change here is, since we have a difference of something here, let's just look at the absolute value of that. We don't really care what the sign is. So we're just storing the absolute value. Well, we also now want to look at ddat, perhaps in addition to idat. So let's go ahead and put in a subplot. Let's do a one, two, one. So this will be an over under thing. So this first number is uh, how many subplots tall. So we'll do one subplot tall, two subplots wide, and we're plotting into the first one. So this graph will appear over to the left and then D dot will appear over to the right. So let's go ahead and copy and paste that code and let's spread things out a little bit so we can look at it. We want to go to the second subplot and now instead of doing uh, I dat, it's D dat that we want to display. Our X axis limit stays the same. Well, we don't know what to do with the Y axis limit. So let's comment that out for right now, or we can even just delete it. And now the Y axis label, we're not plotting the integration. We're really plotting the increments, how much the integration changes as we're adding the number of points. So unless I've goofed, I think we're ready to plot this. So on the left was what we've been looking at. It's the value of the integration as we're adding number of points. And on the right is the increments as we're adding points. But, but look at this, it's approaching zero and it's really looking like a flat line. So even if, okay, that's crammed against the bottom, maybe we use our Y axis limit at negative one, it's still into our eyes going to look like a flat line. And so, in fact, for this sort of thing where we're dealing with large numbers and they're changing by orders of magnitude, but all very small decimals, I like to use a log-based plot. So we'll go ahead and hit Control-C. We don't need that to finish because we can't see our numbers. 
So rather than plot in MATLAB, we will do a semi log Y. And so what semi log Y does, it doesn't actually take the logarithm of our Y value. It really just changes the tick marks to put them on a log scale. Now let's go ahead and run it and see what that looks like. Now notice we're resolving much more finely our, the difference in the increments. Notice how slow this is going. Now, if this function we calculated were not so fast, maybe it took several seconds, maybe it took even 10 minutes. Um, well, this we have a prohibitive number of points here. We really, uh, we'd be in trouble. So let's do something different. And let's, instead of doing every single integer, let's do larger increments here, and it will run much faster. Now, of course, that will also change the, the magnitude of these steps here. So let's make this, uh, I don't know, every 10 up to 1,000, something like that. Now let's filling in much quicker. And we're still resolving things quite well. Maybe instead of 1,000, let's try 10,000. And notice if we were just looking at this original plot, we could not tell increments here. This line is just pretty much going to look flat line. But when we plot the actual increments, well, this is much easier to plot. And it's also slow, and so you know we could go back and, and change our increments to something other than 10. But let's let this go, and let's talk about this. So what's happening now is we see, let's say, if we use 1,000 points, that is roughly 10 to the minus 4. So that means we're already accurate out to about four decimals there. So if we were asking we need a number that is accurate out to, let's say, five decimal places, you know, we would want to be down here, you know, 10 to the minus five, 10 to the minus six, because we want that uh, fifth decimal place. So 10 to the minus six, and so we'd come over here and the curve's probably gonna reach it somewhere around 6,000 points, say. And in some ways, this is even exaggerated because we're skipping every 10 instead of one. So the increments are larger than you know, what they really would be if we were looking at just integer increments. And it's possible to go back in and, and compensate for that. But anyway, 10 to the minus. Uh, I would say from this that if we have 6,000 points, we are accurate to five decimal places. And that's a proper way to do a convergence study. So we determined we need 6,000 points. And you know what? For good luck, if it runs fast enough, maybe I'll just make that 10,000 points. But we'll stick with 6,000 points. But the next thing is, we still don't know about these limits. If we change these limits, that could maybe, maybe not change our answer. And so in the next video, we will do a convergence study on that. So I will see you in the next video.